Let's look at this great quantitative comparison problem dealing with overlapping sets. What's going to be very important in this problem is to keep track of the information that we have. So I'm going to encourage using maybe like a Venn diagram just to keep track of the info we've got. So we've got part A and that's going to represent 82. We've got part B and that's going to represent 73. We know there's an overlap section. Now they start talking about part C. But look at quantity A. Quantity A is interested in the vehicles with either part A, part B, or both parts A and parts B installed in the car. So let's not concern ourselves so much with part C just yet. Given this, we're comparing that value to 150. Well, here's what's important. We don't know about this overlap section between A and B. We know that there are 82 vehicles with part A. We know there are 73 vehicles with part B. And in the question stem, it says that some, part, some vehicles had both parts A and part B. So some vehicle somewhere has both parts. Well, what's the smallest number we can make this overlap section? We can make it something like 1. If this overlap section was 1, well, then there would be 82 vehicles with A, 73 vehicles with B, and one vehicle with both A and B. This overlap section in a Venn diagram gets counted twice if you just add the individual values. If you say 82 and 73, oh, that's 155. What you're forgetting is that this overlap value gets counted once when you count the A, and it gets counted once when you count the B. So this overlap value, since it gets counted twice and you only want it counted once, we have to subtract it out once. So 155 minus 1, there are 154. If the overlap section was just 1, there would be a bigger quantity in quantity A than there would be in B. A would be larger right here. But if that overlap section, let's say, were something like 50, well, now you're going to do the same thing, say, well, 82 plus 73 is 155, but you've got to subtract out that 50. We now get 105. In this scenario, quantity B would be the greater value. Just looking at this and knowing, given the information in the quantities and given in the information in the question stem, in one scenario, quantity A would be the bigger value. In another scenario, quantity B would be the bigger value. That lets us know automatically our final answer must be answer choice D. Whenever in quantitative comparisons you notice you can get different relationships with the two quantities that you're given in the question, meaning you get quantities are the same in one scenario, but quantity A is greater in another scenario. Or in this scenario, where in one scenario quantity A was greater and another quantity B was greater. When you have a scenario like this, your answer choice must be D on test day.